In this video, I'm going to be discussing pulleys. And a very simple explanation of pulleys is that it's a simple machine that gives us a mechanical advantage when we're trying to lift something. Now, many of us probably have used pulleys, and one of the common reasons for using pulleys is to get stuff off of our garage floor. And in this case, you can see that I have a pulley arrangement to lift the child's bike. And you may have done the same, either to get bikes off the floor, or maybe a kayak, or just really anything that you want to, to attach to the ceiling of your garage. And when you pull the rope, you may feel that there's a difference in the weight, depending on what kind of pulley configuration that you have. But you may not necessarily understand how pulleys are working or why it is that the object may feel lighter as you're trying to, to move it or trying to secure it to the ceiling of your garage. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing the mechanical advantage of pulleys. I'm going to break it down into the two components. One is going to be the amount of uh, rope or the length of rope that you need to pull. The other is going to be the forces that are involved with pulleys. So I'm going to show three different pulley configurations. Also, I do teach this uh, as a STEM class to middle schoolers. So if you're actually wanting to put this into practice or to do this as a, uh, a school assignment or just some something extra for a student, I'll show you how we rig these up uh, for the demonstration. It allows the kids to learn how to uh, rig up pulleys, but also to give them a chance to feel how pulleys can change the amount of effort that's needed to, to lift the weight. So in this first configuration, <clears throat> we have one pulley. Now, if we want to lift this weight and the rope is attached to a weight, if we want to lift this weight a certain amount, then what we're going to have to do is to shorten the length of this segment of rope by that same amount, which means that we're going to have to pull that amount of rope in order to lift this object. So very simple. I think that this is probably very logical. If you are going to lift this object one foot, you need to pull one foot or one, uh, you need to pull one foot of rope. And I think that most people can understand that. So when we start getting into the more complex pulleys, that it becomes a little bit more confusing. So here's an arrangement where you have two pulleys. And again, if we want to lift this weight a certain amount, we now have to shorten not one, but two segments of rope by that same amount, which means that we're going to need to pull twice the amount of rope. So again, if you want to lift this up one foot, you're going to have to pull two feet of rope in order to lift that object. Here's another configuration where we have four pulleys. And in this case, we have uh, the two of the pulleys, the two lower pulleys, are both connected to the weight. So again, if we want to lift that object a certain amount, now it's not one segment of rope, but two segments of rope. It's four segments of rope that also need to be shortened by that length, which means that we have to pull four times the amount of rope in order to be able to lift that object. So again, if we want to lift this up one foot, we need to pull four feet of rope. So you might be wondering, this is one of the questions that I get from the kids, is that why would I rig up a pulley system like this? Because it seems like I'm having to do a lot more work. I'm having to pull four feet of rope instead of one, one foot of rope. But it's only because we looked at only one component. We're only looking at the length right now. We're not looking at the forces. Let's go back to this pulley configuration. It's a very simple configuration where there's one pulley. Now, any tension that I put in the rope is going to be the same throughout the entire rope. So if I'm pulling down with a certain force, that same force is going to be acting upward at this point in the rope. And if I want to lift this, then that force has to be equal to, actually it needs to be slightly greater than, but for simplicity, we'll just say that it needs to be equal to the weight of the object. So we have the sum of the forces in the vertical direction have to be equal. 
So in this case, we put a certain tension in the rope, and that tension needs to be equal to the weight. Now we're going to move to this next configuration. Now instead of having that tension acting upward at one point, it's now acting upward at two points. So basically any kind of force, any kind of tension that I put into the rope is going to be doubled. So now basically I have twice the amount of effort that's being used or twice the amount of mechanical advantage that's being used to lift this weight to make this some of the forces in the vertical direction equal. So again, I put tension in the rope, but now that tension acts upward at two places or two points instead of one point. So now I have twice the tension being used to lift the weight. So if we write that out mathematically, it's basically just two times the tension is equal to the weight. We can move things around and say that the tension or the force that's needed to lift the object is going to be one half of the weight instead of the entire amount of the weight. If we move on to this configuration, you can see that the tension that you put into the rope is going to be acting upward at four points instead of one. So any kind of tension, or any kind of force that I put into the rope is being multiplied by a factor of four, and that's going to be used to lift the weight. So again, we have the tension and the weight, and we want to see mathematically how those relate. So we now have four times that tension meaning that it's acting upward at four spots, is equal to the weight in order to be able to get this to move off the ground. And if we rearrange it, the tension or the force that's needed is going to be one-fourth of the weight. So you can see that it takes a lot less effort or a lot less um, force to get this weight to move. But it comes at the expense of you need to pull more rope. So this is the setup that we had um, when I was doing this experiment with the kids. This is the, the first one. And a couple of items, if you do plan to do this, I tend to keep it low. So that way, if a knot fails or something, that it doesn't fall on your head or one of the kids' heads. The other thing to notice, feet are kept away from the weight. Kids do tend to drop the weight after they lift it. Uh, so you want to make sure feet aren't uh, below the weight. I do have clips instead of pulleys at the top that will create a little bit more friction. Pulleys have the wheels, so they tend to be tend to have le a lot less friction than this. Uh, but this still works to demonstrate the concept. So I use clips at the top. We tied all three of them on, uh, so that way we'd be ready for all three configurations. So this is the first configuration, and you can see that we have a rope tied to the weight. It gets fed through the clip or the pulley, and then you have someone pulling that weight off the ground. This is the second option. And you can see that we have a rope that's connected to one of the clips. It gets fed through the pulley and then comes around and through the other clip and is being pulled. And you can also see that at the bottom of the pulley, there's an eye, and there's a rope that's tied through the eye and then connected to this weight. So if you do this experiment, you want to make sure that you get pulleys that have eyes on them. And one of the things that you'll notice is that the weight will feel lighter in this case, and but that you will have to pull more rope to get it to move. And this one looks kind of busy. This is the third configuration. But you can see it's connected to a clip fed through one pulley, back up to the second clip, and then down, fed through the pulley, and then back through the final clip, and then it's being pulled to lift the weight off the ground. And when you have it in this configuration, you can feel uh, quite a bit of difference in the amount of force that you need to pull with in order to get the weight to move. In this case, this is a 15 pound weight. So theoretically, it should only take 3.75 pounds of force to get it to lift. But because of friction, if you happen to use a spring scale on this, because of friction, you'll probably find that it will take a little bit more effort than, than just one fourth of the weight. 
So hopefully you found this video to be interesting and hopefully it helped you to understand the, the theory or the principles behind pulleys. Um, I want to thank you for watching this video.